would like to thank uh, ISF College of Pharmacy, uh, Praveen Garg sir, Chairman IF, uh, I think ISFCP, Professor G.D. Gupta sir, Director and Principal ISFCP, Professor Arshin Aran sir, Vice Principal ISFCP, and Dr. Naresh sir, we work together with our uh, am I audible to all of you? Yes, sir. Sir, uh... so kindly accept my sincere thanks. And I have seen this ISF college ranking and the work. The college is working very good. I really am very like, honored to present with you. So basically, I have started this presentation. It is about the basics of cell culture lab. And uh, it's just a uh, basic so student can get an idea how to start working and how to do the cell culture and in vitro thing. So uh, before starting the presentation, uh, shall I introduce uh, to our uh, worthy director sir is here. So Pardon? Sir, our uh, institute's direct, uh, worthy director sir is here. So Okay, 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 director sir. Uh, okay. okay, so, so uh, I would like I would to like Director, sir, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, I'm, I'm very much thankful, sir. Uh, I think uh, uh, Gupta, sir, is here also. Na? Naresh ji, so thank you very much, Dr. Gaurav. So please continue. You can start your lecture and we can uh, discuss in the end of the lecture. Okay, please continue. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for providing such a good opportunity. So, so uh, is, uh, okay. Uh, sir, let me introduce to you. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, myself, Dr. Naresh Rangra, uh, I welcome you all in this ISFCP sponsored dialogue series. So, today's guest speaker is Dr. Gaurav Kumar. He is working as a manager R&D, bioassay division, new product development, Patanjali Foods Private Limited, Hardwar. He is an alumnus of uh, Birla Institute of Technology, Mishra Ranchi. And his specializations are cell culture and bioassay. So I welcome you, sir, on uh, today's talk that is basics of cell culture and bioassay. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Naresh. Dr. Naresh is a good friend of mine. We have worked together during my PhD. Yes, Naresh? Yes, sir. And, Thank you, and sir. after my PhD, I went for my postdoc to Italy and then I joined uh, Medical College Sadol. Uh, it was as a scientist, COVID-19 scientist. So I think we haven't met for quite a good time, like three or four years. But uh, it is good to again uh, join hands together. So let's start with this cell culture facility and uh, what is the basics of cell culture. Uh, I have seen students uh, often, often want to work with this cell culture facility and uh, related area. So that's why I prepared this presentation. It is a very basic presentation, giving a small idea of how a person can work in, inside the cell lines and inside the uh, cell culture lab. So uh, we will start with the equipment, uh, those equipment which we are uh, generally using in our laboratory or we are using for uh, more advanced results. But before starting uh, with this, uh, facilities and this, this uh, presentation, I would like to tell that uh, the basic focus during any kind of a culture is maintaining this aseptic condition, a pathogen or any kind of a microorganism or any kind of a contaminated particle free environment is uh, the strong necessity for any kind of a culture, study. either it is a bacterial culture it is, or it is a uh, plant cell culture or uh, this Gaurav ji. Yes, hello. Sir Gaurav. Yes, sir. Your voice is breaking, so please adjust mic because this lecture is very, very important and innovative. So, okay. Yeah, so please check it. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll try. I'll try my best to do this. Uh... So, am I audible? Yes, sir. We are audio. So you can adjust your camera also. Camera. Okay. okay. Uh, am I audible? Uh, yes. am, am I visible to you also? So, 
yes sir so please continue okay so to start with this lecture uh, the basic equipment uh, i'll start with self culture wood or you can call this uh, up to the to call this uh, the laminar air flow or in more advanced version biosafety cabinet the incubator that is a co2 based incubator water bath centrifuge refrigerator and freezer cell counter and inverted microscope other than that we also required the small uh, instrument or apparatus like uh, cell culture vessel prepared waste container filtering unit liquid nitrogen and ph meter these are the basic equipment we needed for this uh, cell culture system and for uh, if you want to do more uh, advanced work we are people are using confocal microscope flow cytometer real time pcr plotting unit for uh, dna rna northern southern bot plotting western group for protein western plotting as well as uh, people are using for transfection the gene gun method and um, there are a chemical method also available for transfection and uh, gene manipulation so i'll start with this cell culture you food there are uh, this is the uh, basic uh, i think first requirement after uh, uh, establishment of the cell culture lab and uh, um, right now the biology when we talk about the biological safety cabinet we will start knowing uh, biosafety labs also the bsl 1 2 3 4 lab uh, on the basis of uh, the system what we are using whether they are pathogenic whether they are airborne whether these uh, systems uh, what what we are using are uh, capability to contaminate water air or uh, it has a chance to manipulate the environment so on the basis of these things uh, we we uh, like to use or select the biosafety cabinet if if suppose if our lab is using a radioactive element we want to go for biosafety level 4 so that we can't uh, like Uh, expose those um, uh, toxic substance to the environment so uh, and the, the need is very clear it is of course safety of person environment product protection of course as well as uh, to maintain uh, a complete aseptic condition inside the lab okay and i have marked here uh, that this this food is not a storage area because i have seen there are people who are working in uh, this laminar air flow or biosafety cabinet they put everything inside this biosafety cabinet so a person should avoid always these kind of things because once you started working in this biosafety cabinet it is the first line of protection for you for the sample as well as for the environment now uh, the these are uh, divided in three types the biosafety cabinet class 1 class 2 and class 3 and this division is on the basis of air circulation basically uh, when we are working in this, this uh, once um, I, i'll start with this uh, small uh, those, those first previous uh, laminar air flow so in that laminar air flow whether these are uh, horizontal or vertical so in vertical we know that uh, the air passes from upper layer to the base while in horizontal the air passes from inside to outside they are just for the uh, protection of the sample so that protection didn't get contaminated but now the biosafety cabinet uh, are made not only to maintain or um, aseptic condition or um, um, avoid the contamination as well as also protect uh, the person as well as sample as well as environment so um, basically uh, the image which he, which has shown here it's for a2 it's a biosafety level 2 lab uh, instrument and it has a 70% of air circulation like uh, the air which is used inside it is uh, will be recirculate up to 70% while 30% will be exhausted if i'll go further uh, the biosafety level uh, like uh, b1 uh, i'll take as an example of b1 in that kind of a uh, biosafety cabinet the 100% air will be exhausted so we have to maintain uh, a positive pressure inside the lab while using the havoc system as well as we have to always maintain the level of air or oxygen because uh, the laminar well or the biosafety cabinet will exhaust 100% of air which is passing through inside okay so these are the biosafety cabinets then uh, 
the HEPA filter, it, it is a very classical thing, the high efficiency particulate absorbing or high efficiency particulate air filter, uh, basically 0.3 micrometer of the uh, hole inside this will be needed. And it's a 99.9% uh, .9 I have written here, it will um, absorb the dust, mold, bacteria, or any kind of uh, airborne particle or uh, uh, bacteria or virus or anything which can con make contamination inside this uh, system. Then uh, the CO2 incubator, which is a very important thing uh, to grow cell lines because uh, in this cell line system, we also need uh, to run this bicarbonate turtle and uh, then we need to give uh, the best environment to pass the gas as well as the, uh, to grow the cells. So, mm -hmm. to maintain these cell lines, uh, we have this CO2 incubator and there are various plants. Uh, we, we have to maintain the 37 degrees Celsius temperature, 5% CO2 level. So, we put a gas cylinder along with this. Uh, Dr. Baruch, I think the slides are not moving. Can you please check? Well, the slides are not moving. Yes. Sir. Okay. Should I start? Um, like, um, so you can continue with only slides or not? Moving. Okay. This slide is visible now. Now it's visible, sir. You can continue. Now it's visible now. Yes. And it's moving. It's moving. Okay. So actually, I have passed these two slides: agricultural equipment, the basic equipment, uh, additional equipment. Help us the wood, biosafety cabinet, HIPAA, and incubator. These two slides I have already passed, and I just discussed about this uh, in biosafety cabinet as well as incubator. Do I need to explain it again, or I should pass on? Dr. Nares? You can uh, continue from. Okay, okay. So, uh, as we have uh, discussed with the incubator now the water bath water bath is the system to like uh, the, we need a media at 37 degrees celsius uh, as well as there are a number of things like uh, trypsin and uh, fetal bovine serum and antibiotic antimicrotic solutions these are always kept at minus 80 or minus 20 degrees celsius so to melt these things down as well as to passage the cell from cryovial to normal cell, cell culture system, we need this water bath. Then centrifuge. Uh, centrifuge are the most important instrument. I think, uh, like most general instrument which we, every lab is using for so many purposes. So uh, there is a one centrifuge is uh, shown here as well as one mini steel. That, that can go up to, the, the big centrifuge can go up to 14,000 uh, RPM, while the small mini steel is, uh, nowadays can go up to 10,000 RPM. And uh, the uh, one is refrigerated while the other one is a normal temperature. Uh, refrigerator and freezer, these are the most uh, like general instrument, but they are very important because uh, most of the reagents which we are using for the cell culture system is needed to maintain at 4 degrees Celsius, 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. And uh, either they are for 2 to 8 degrees Celsius or we have to store it at minus 80 or minus 20. Uh, so, I think uh, this um, fridge and freezer are the most important thing for a person who is going to start or establish a new lab. Then cryogenic storage, uh, liquid nitrogen uh, based storage is very uh, useful method, although it's very expensive, but uh, one can store cell for a long period of time inside this cryogenic storage. You can store your cells for uh, like three to six months in minus 80 degrees Celsius using your uh, stock solution, the free cryo media. But if you want to store a cell for 
unlimited period of time for 10, 20, 30 years, then you must need this liquid nitrogen based container. The importance is uh, well known because the cell culture is a kind of a thing which you want to maintain for a long period of time and use repeatedly, but uh, expenditure is high because you have to spend a lot of money to like we in our lab in every 15 days we have to fill these um, cryo storage boxes uh, or tanks. Then uh, cell counter, hemocytometer. Uh, I think uh, in, uh, people are using a most common way. It contains four uh, chambers. Or, uh, and uh, we have to count the cells before starting the experiment, before uh, uh, massaging the cells. Every time we need this uh, hemocytometer. Then inverted microscope. Uh, in, in, in cell culture lab, we don't use the bright field microscope, we use inverted microscope so then the light can come from the upper side and the lenses are behind. Uh, it will help us to um, see the cells in better way and um, this inverted microscope is used by every, every single lab. Pipettes, uh, there are uh, three types of a pipette I have shown here. One is variable pipettes, it uh, ranges from 0 0.5 microliter to Thousand microliter. Other is uh, in the middle. It, it, it is this, this one is a serological pipette. Uh, it has also a variable range from uh, two ml to fifty ml, and um, it's an electronic pipette. So you have to charge it, and then it can work. You can work up to a week, depends on how much use you have. Then a multi-channel pipette is used for the ACA processes because uh, there are uh, we use uh, ninety-six well or more than 96 well plates. So once we are using this kind of a plate, we don't want to waste our time in a single pipetting. That's why we use this multi-channel pipet, which is helpful to proceed up to eight or 12 wells in simultaneously. Then the flask, the special flask we are used for tissue culture. Uh, these are called a T-shaped flask or six well, 96 well, 12 well or 48 well flask. Uh, these flasks are also uh, two types uh, on basis of their cap. One are a vented cap, uh, while the second one are uh, the full flows, the filtered normal cap. So in the, in the vented cap, we put the filter and it allows the air to pass from uh, outside to inside or inside to outside. That's why it can maintain the respiratory system. Um, we can't say the respiratory, but the exchange of air. Exchange of air is uh, allowed inside this um, vented cap. Uh, other than that, uh, we use for a uh, uh, coated uh, plate as well as for the adherent culture as well as um, non-coated plate. We will discuss this plates also on the basis of uh, uh, types of cell in our um, next slide. Then the most important thing which I think uh, anyone should know before entering inside the cell culture lab, these are good cell culture practices. So a, a person who wants to work in this area should we must be known with this. I'll give an example in our uh, next slide, but uh, why it is very important. The maintenance of high standard uh, is fundamental and it's, a, uh, it's a, a non avoidable non avoidable because a person who is doing uh, experiment inside the lab using the cell culture is giving these results to whole scientific community. And your results will uh, allow the development of many things Maybe uh, what results you are producing can be used by a fellow student or a fellow colleague for their own experiment. Or these uh, results can lead to a medicine, uh, lead to a, uh, a new product which can be used in several ways by several people. So uh, it is very important to maintain this good cell culture practice. Uh, I have like given one example that the Hila cell which is a cervix cell line, a cancerous cell line, can be, has been already been contaminated with Hep G2, can liver, and these are liver cell lines. So the, these both, up. I'll give one simple example. If I'm using one kind of a cell line, which is a lung cancer cell line or osteocytes or osteoblastoma, 
and somehow I use a certain a different kind of a cell line at the same time, and I get con mix, I get get mixed with those things. So while doing the uh, genetic work, it will always give the wrong information, and people will always uh, get furious with the result because it it will not give the true result. Other than that, uh, mycoplasma joker of the plant kingdom is also an example which is um, placed by uh, several labs because it grows simultaneously with the cells and uh, it can be like detected through the real time PCR. But if you are not using this detection process regularly in your lab, you will be facing uh, so much of genetic and phenotypic changes during this uh, your experiment. And then because we know that uh, cell lines are inheritably unstable and with the um, contamination, it might be possible that on the basis of genetic level, we will start giving the different result, the different kind of uh, phenomenon, and it will lead to misinformed information for a uh, number of students or number of people who are using the results for their own research. Uh, the standards in cell culture, uh, why they are needed? Of course, we are discussing that uh, what are the important things, the inherited variation in in vitro cell base, cell base system, uh, complex in vitro cell culture system, or lack of well-trained cell culture stuff. These are the things which we need in, to maintain inside our lab. We cannot uh, make the in vitro cell culture system too complex that a person uh, get always confused with everything and um, so we have to clearly mention the cell line name, the passage number, uh, the, if we, if we find any kind of a small or uh, contamination, we should remove it and properly maintain in logbook so that a person should know that if this kind of a contamination has been faced earlier in this lab due to this problem. Okay. The staff should be very well cultured so that they cannot uh, spread something causing a kind of epidemic kind of a, 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 a kind of a cell line which is a, uh, abruptly contaminated and gives a false result every time this, a person do the experiment so uh, to during the production as well as the testing we need to maintain a good sop with a perfect uh, line uh, to like a perfect line of work so that uh, it will guide every person who is working inside the lab for perfect uh, getting the good result okay and uh, I, I have like got this line and I find it a very um, perfect example actually what happened when we are working in academy everyone faced a kind of a constraint in a budget and a kind of a constraint in place because uh, in India as well as the other country, uh, academy people are always facing these kind of a constraints. And thus it will lead, suppose a person is working in academy and it has only uh, kit for 100 reactions, you don't want to waste those kits for uh, triplicate he sometimes he plan okay i'll do the experiment in a duplicate or sometimes what happened we don't want to repeat these results for several times because the kits are expensive uh, the media is expensive the hospital bovine serum is very expensive so uh, maintenance of this kind of a practice is uh, a very good challenge for everyone it's not a, a, a thing which is doing by person intentionally it is the thing which a person uh, who is working in academic has to suffer, unfortunately. Then the start of this, this is the history, uh, how it is. It has started in 1999, General Assembly of Third World Congress on Alternative and Animal Use has stated several rules that uh, how a person has to work inside this uh, cell culture lab. Uh, I'll start with this aim. Uh, what, what is the aim? the aim of this um, assembly was to reduce uncertainty in the data from a cell culture system because uh, the people working in the cell culture lab uh, 
uh, have a, a very random data set. I have seen a few people who are working doing the cytotoxicity assay uh, while they have, if they are doing four or five independent assays, they have a different kind of set of results. So to avoid those things, to uh, get the best result with the cells and tissue and uh, following this uh, pharmacy, European pharmacopoeia or or any kind of pharmacopoeia which we are using, it is very important to go with this uh, good cell culture practice guideline. Uh, these are two documents which a person should always maintain. Uh, the uh, highlights of these documents are characterization and maintenance of essential feature of the in vitro system. What the in vitro system you are using, whether it's a human, whether it's a, from any other animal sources, from how it has been obtained, whether you have purchased it or it has been given from any good lab to you, the quality control of the system, how you are, um, um, like the bio waste, how you have maintained to um, destroy those bio waste. Everything should be recording and uh, reported every time if anything, any mishap or any good thing happened, everything which has happened should always be reported to the, the superior authorities. The safety precautions, uh, like if you are handling ethidium bromide, you should know, like if you are um, having this UV um, lights in your lab, so you should know that how, uh, and you should aware those uh, lower staff, the housekeeping staff, that how they can avoid to get uh, in contact with those toxic substance or toxic nature of um, source. Ethics, of course, ethics should be maintained in every kind of a research. Uh, uh, a person should avoid giving any false result or false interpretation. If, if you are getting, if you are not getting good results, that doesn't mean your research is not good. If you are not getting the results that you have planned, it doesn't mean that your uh, work is not good. Uh, negative result. Uh, and my guide, my PhD guide has told me once that a negative result is also a result because that's how you can tell the community that okay, don't go with this experiment, it will not give you any result. Or if you want to go with this, don't go with my protocol. Through my protocol, you can, I am not, I was not able to get those results, so it is not best to go with this protocol or this sample or anything. You can share your idea and then the person who wants to work and use these ideas for their own purpose. Education and training. For any cell culture lab, it is very important to start with your good concepts as well as go with the um, training before starting your own um, set of experiments. Okay. Uh, Dr. Nares, am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. You are, okay, okay. You are audible. Okay, okay. And, and the slides are working fine now, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. The sixth principle of GCCP, uh, establishment, maintenance of sufficient understanding of the in vitro system and on, uh, of the relevant factors which can affect it. Like what uh, I have told earlier, that what kind of in vitro system you are using. Uh, yeah, what, what are those factors? Uh, whether these cells can be tryptonized in one minute or these cells can be tryptonized for six minutes. Whether uh, once you have started uh, tryptonizing these cells, whether they need to tryptonize or you can scrap it uh, from the bottom and use it, whether these cells are adherent or suspension culture. These are very important and it should be always recorded, recorded, known or read previously before starting any experiment. Assurance and quality of all material and method. Of course, uh, there are several protocol for the similar test has been used. I have by the people and they are developing day by day the good protocols has been developed by scholars so to know the good protocol and the reproducibility of this protocol is very important because uh, development of uh, a protocol is a good thing but the, those protocols should be reproducible in other states too uh, I, the means of state is if a uh, protocol has been developed for mct essay it should be very general, it, it should be not very specific or if it is very specific then it should be mentioned in the protocol section that okay this protocol is absolutely dedicated for this kind of a uh, sample, not for every kind of a, of a sample. 
to avoid the uh, wastage of the time. Then documentation of the information is necessary to track the material method. I have earlier uh, in my previous slide, I have told that it is very important to write down everything and to report everything because that's how you are doing the very good uh, ethical research in my opinion because once you start giving uh, the track of the results the track of the experiment it will give uh, your audience a chance to uh, like rectify anything if you are doing wrong uh, or they can share their idea so that you can get your results in a good way. Establishment and maintenance of adequate, me adequate measure to protect individual is very important. We are um, like in every lab we are using this uh, fire um, protector as well as we have to use, I have seen like if you are using the cryo wires or uh, liquid nitrogen container or if you are using a minus AC, please wear gloves those are dedicated for this um, deep freezer because it might be uh, sometimes give you the very bad kind of uh, results for your own as well as the student or the people who are following you. Now the compliance with the relevant la law is very important. Of course, you have to know the, how to do the waste management, whether you can use the animal or the living models for your experiment with the proper uh, way or not. So the provision of, um, this is a very important, other than that, the sixth one is the provision of relevant and adequate education and training for all personnel. Of course, to start with any experiment, um, it, it, uh, there is a saying, Adjal Gagri Chalkat Jai. Like uh, every person who is working or willing to work inside the lab is uh, need to get all the important information as well as all the basic principle or the knowledge before starting any kind of work inside not only cell culture inside any lab now application of course the application is in basic research testing procedure diagnosis pharmacology bias regulatory toxicology manufacture of product therapeutic preparation of cells and tissues like vaccine, antibody, anything, anything, wherever you are using VGCCP are applicable, whether it is an academia or whether it is an um, industry or you are doing your diagnostic lab, of course, you have to follow all those VGCCP guidelines if you are working with the cell culture system or in vitro or in vivo system. Then uh, this regulatory testing of biopsy lab. Uh, I think... Uh, Three kind of a test we are, I'm going to explain here, just for the basic knowledge. The one is computational or in silico. The second one is in vivo and then ex vivo and in vivo system. So the computational modeling is the a model which we use using this computer system, the bioinformatics system. Usually it uh, reduce your effort and time as well as save your money because uh, Many years back, people have to start with everything inside the lab to work everything uh, in, the, in the lab. Nowadays, we use number of software. There are software uh, modelers for protein, Gromex. There are software machine learning is there. As well as Schrodinger is Mastro is used by uh, for QSAR study as well as the other study. It reduces your time as well as money, and you can get uh, more near to your result to avoid uh, doing those experiments which are unnecessary. Then uh, in vitro culture, um, cell line culture which we use inside this lab, like uh, we maintain the, uh, we try to maintain uh, system, the cellular system in a flask and we do the experiment. It will give you a preliminary result. Uh, inexpensive, it doesn't need to sacrifice a uh, life, uh, but again, this result needs to be uh, confirmed by uh, using the in vivo or clinical or the other study, the more advanced study. So, this is the a graph I have plotted just for knowledge uh, the in silico graph, uh, how we can start 
we we use this uh, suppose i uh, i got some protein uh, i can use the xrd to identify the structure of these protein nmr to identify maldisoft to identify the the structure of this protein i can put those protein in the pdb directory people will use the genomic and the proteomic things to find the k molecule the ligands how the this protein protein molecule can be stabilized and then they can use their chemical library to target uh, the position where it, this this target can this ligand can bind with this protein and uh, through this uh, they can minimize the effort uh, like to avoid number of synthesized molecule to test every time inside the lab the molecules which will give you the best pdma property is uh, used for further research or further advancement of the process and uh, after pharmacology pharmacokinetics and other process pre clinical clinical you can go for the final compound which can be used for the community for the market purpose for the community purpose for everyone then in vitro culture within the glass i have taken the example of this in vitro fertilization process so how uh, it can be picked up uh, it can seen in the first uh, number from the philippine tube this egg has been picked in this beaker and then it has been fertilized with the sperm and then the embryo development and the embryo transfer and things so this whole process has been done inside the body and then this uh, the goat has been transplanted uh, sorry embryo embryo not the egg the embryo has been transplanted again inside the person and given the birth of a new living species this is the basic example which we use or which we can see in uh, every day of our life but uh, inside this our lab what we do we can take a single cell uh, from the tissue and we grow these cells in in the species that flag and these plants uh, using those cells we can do number of biological assay as well as the number of experiments which give us a preliminary or we can say a good results to proceed further for development of new product or for um, for knowledge more knowledge like where the biomarker can work or if um, a person is suffering from a disease what is the uh, reasons behind those uh, contamination or behind those uh, like uh, not contamination those pathogen the pathogenicity of the pathogen or anything any any problem which we are facing we can go for the for the advancement of knowing uh, further things about those uh, disease or anything the advanced knowledge then the in vivo using of animal model is an other aspect of the work the more advanced aspect of this in vitro culture once we will do this in vitro culture we can uh, use those things which has been already been selected and uh, to perform the more more experiments and getting more uh, result nearer to our goal so you can see in this um, whole uh, diagram a person is giving intracerebral injection retroorbital blood collection uh sometimes surgery is needed intraperitoneal in intestinal blood uh, the sample has been dosed some intramuscular experiment some subcutaneous and like um, every time uh, we want to develop a product which has to be used directly inside the human being we use uh, the animal model and we get the result which are which can be more closer to success the biochemical and cell based assay which uh, we use on a regular basis uh, uh, you can say uh, a biochemical assay is an analytical procedure to detect and quantify cellular processes not only here here i have mentioned this apoptosis and cell signal but there are number of uh, things which you can use using this biochemical assay and that can be divided in two section the biochemical and cell based assay the so those assay which are performed on cell culture or cells or cell based model 
as well as those experiments which can be performed on tissues or the glass vessels for example any kind of enzyme based tissue are usually be performed inside the lab but once we uh, took those enzymes from the cell system like we dose the cells and then we took the supernatant and used for elagia purpose that will be the cell based biochemical issue so uh, this is the basic flow chart of the cell culture system how we are going to work inside the uh, cell culture laboratory we take a cell stock stock from this um, cryo tank or minus 80 with how uh, like we have these these uh, cell wires has been put on minus 80 degrees celsius to minus 190 degrees celsius so they are of course frozen we have to thaw it and we have to thaw it very rapidly i'll uh, tell in my next slide that how to thaw these cells we have to thaw these cells then we have to add a uh, media a uh, warm media drop by drop method so that these cells will avoid the shock instant shock and the media will avoid the dmso action then these cells should be passed in these a flask after centrifugation or before centrifugation because there are two processes usually we use a uh, few people directly uh, put those cryo uh, media inside the 10 ml of uh, media and they grow this for uh, four to five hours then they wash those uh, media with phosphoric uh, buffer saline and then they put the new media other than a uh, few people what what uh, we do we centrifuge this uh, cryo vial containing this uh, uh, we, we put this cryo vial material to uh, 10 ml of tube containing dynamic media then we centrifuge it for a 3000 rpm for 4 to 5 minutes and then we discard the supernatant the adherent um, pellets were dissolved again in a fresh media and this uh, this should be inoculated in high uh, level of or uh, sorry uh, 25 cc of or uh, 75 cc of flask so that's how we will uh, grow the cell line which need a replacement of the media after a definite period of a time or which need uh, to trypsinize and passage for the next uh, like a single confluent flask can be passed into another three flask system and then grow and go for experiment or assay or again they can store in this tank for further process then types of cell culture They, these are, there are two kind of a cell the adherent cells which can uh, which basically adhere or attach to the surface of this uh, tissue flask while the other is suspension cell culture suspension cell culture are floating cells and usually the the blood cells are a very good example of suspension cell culture uh, again um, by reactor and the, the animal flask has been used usually for suspension cell culture but yes of course you can grow the suspension cell culture also in these flask which should be non treated very good thing to thank you all to treat the cell and then adherent uh, should be grown in always in the flask which has been previously treated with the material like polyalkylene and there are several materials which you can use for uh, making those flask Uh, good for adherent cell culture. Okay, so uh, what is the difference between adherent cell culture and suspension cell culture? Uh, adherent are appropriate for most cell type, including primary culture, while the suspension are non-adherent. So the hemopoietic blood cells are usually suspension. Adherent usually require periodic passaging, but the passage need to trypsinize first like to be attached from the surface and then we can uh, transfer it to another vial using the simple process I'll, i'll give a brief of this process right now then um, the suspension culture is required the counting mostly and then you can transfer once you got uh, the number of count which is more than the required or you can say more than the confluency 
you can transfer it in different class. So if I am using hydrogen cell culture, what I will do, once I'll see those uh, TCA plasts inside the microscope and I found that, okay, there is a carpet of cells are spread it, and there is a no place that is called the confluency. I'll remove the media, wash it with the phosphate buffer saline, and then I'll go to the trypsin, uh, film of trypsin, these are the cell gene attachment factor in this class. So now there are two kind of a method a person can use. A uh, few person, what what the few person do? They put the trypsin 2 ml in a 25 of a class, and after a period of a time, like 20 to 30 seconds, they remove those trypsin and they put a fresh trypsin, a film of fresh trypsin. While a few people, what they do, they uh, at the first moment they use the trypsin, a film of trypsin, and they put those flask inside the incubator for three to five minutes. And once the cell get reattached, which you can check in a uh, microscope, they give the stop solution. What is the stop solution? It is the equal amount of SDA. So I always give an idea uh, that your 10% uh, SDA can work as an equal amount of the solution. So you use uh, the media which containing 10% of SDA in that protein uh, with the equal amount and 10% of SDA can work fine for uh, stopping the action of this protein. Then you have to use this uh, the material, the supernatant as well as the cell and then uh, you have to collect the pellet. You have to discard the supernatant in the view after the centrifugation and the pellet should be again mix with the press uh, media and then you have to count these using the hemocytometer and the required amount it could be one lakh to two lakh for storage one million to two million for storage or uh, one million cells to two million depend on the cells for another saving and you can use those for your further assessing and uh, experiment process now what are the requirement of the cell culture so we have checked the instrument. Now what we have to need it uh, to use the process, we need some media. There are different kinds of media available for several times, uh, like DNA media. Uh, sir, MEM pardon media. to just interrupt you, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Sir, due to another speaker is also waiting for. Okay, so, okay. Uh, I think so I have. I request to please conclude. The... Yeah, yeah. I have three or four more slides. So I'll try to conclude. Okay. Thanks. Is it fine? Okay, sir. Okay. So we need this uh, a media which contains this uh, carbohydrate, vitamin, mineral, and growth factor, as well as amino acid and hardware. Other than that, we also use kind of a antibiotic and antimicrotic solution just to avoid a kind of a contamination. But this is also again a question of debate to, to use it and to people don't use it. Then because of this time constraint, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, what I'll do, I'll uh, send this PPT to you also. Dr. Nareesh, is it fine with you? Hello? Hello? Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes. So, uh, what I will do, uh, I'll, I'll send this PPT to you also, so you can share it uh, at the appropriate place. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. So um, I'll, I'll um, escape this time process and I'll come to the subculturing of the cell, uh, which I have already told in our previous slide, that how those uh, plasts uh, can be go through this process. Uh, if I, I can see, this is, these are the confluent monolayers, and we um, remove this media, wash it with this uh, PBS, then we add the scene. The scene is removed and leaving the residual film. Then, uh, after two to five minutes, or there it is written ten minutes, the cells will be rounding up, and then we can resuspend the cells in a tube using a media. Then it has to be centrifuged and then re seated in a new flask and again incubated 37 degrees Celsius, which gives us a new fresh batch of cells. The cryopreservation is another step where we have to count the cells and put inside this freezing media which contains 10% of DMSO and SPS or there are a, a market-based uh, 
that is a different medium are also relevant uh, in the weekend that reserve the i have uh, put one picture that one the cell where uh, non recognized and when the cells were recognized just for the knowledge of the students so they can understand or differentiate between recognized and non recognized cells and then uh, i had planned for uh, this mpt but because of the time constraint i have next day i'll take this lecture regarding the bio issue so the most important thing is the best container i would like to request who is working in the cell culture lab or any kind of a pilot cell system has to know the difference of red yellow blue or black green bag and like use or dispose your waste in appropriate plant okay so with this i would like to conclude my अपॉर्चुनिटी टू हियर यूर views on the topic basics of cell culture and bioassay and uh, this will surely be going to encourage us in our future research events so once again thank you sir thank you thank you very much uh, dr naresh you can stop the recording and left the meeting नरेश सर रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ कर देते सर रिकॉर्डिंग ऑफ स्टॉप रिकॉर्डिंग देर आर थ्री बटन्स सर बटन्स तो है वर्क क्यों नहीं आप ढूंढ नहीं पा रहे नरेश सर स्टॉप रिकॉर्डिंग वाला 